welcome to High Street Chapel. Today we are celebrating the first week of Advent and we're thinking about joy. This year we all have to live differently and life has been difficult for many people. In the early summer many of us stood outside to cut the NHS and thank them. At Christmas time we had lots to thank God for too because we remember how he sent his son Jesus to be our friend and saviour. In the Bible, in Psalm 41, it says, Clap your hands, all ye nations, shout to God with cries of joy. The angels visited the shepherds when Jesus was born and said, Do not be afraid, I bring you good news of great joy for all people. Do you know Jesus? Have you welcomed him to your heart? Do you know his joy? In the Bible, Isaiah, it talks about the joy of knowing Jesus. Everlasting joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake them and sorrow and sighing will flee away. Thank you, Jesus, for the joy you bring. We light the candle of joy. The Lord has done great things for us and we are filled with joy.
here we are on Advent Sunday and it's quite frankly hard to believe that it is almost Christmas time again. Just incredible this year that way it's flown by but of course most of the country right now are wondering what kind of Christmas are we actually going to have? What's it going to be like? What with all the, the regulations and us being in these tiers and all of all of that. And this morning, I, I want to start off by, uh, by saying or by recognising that, yes, Christmas may be different for many of us this year in how we celebrate, in the way that we celebrate. But of course, for millions of Christians around the world this Christmas, it will not be different because of who we celebrate, namely Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ hasn't changed, been cancelled or restricted. And the wonderful news of his coming will be celebrated across this world, come what may. As many people have done over the centuries, in spite of wars and famines and plagues. So Christmas, the real true meaning of Christmas, and the person at the centre of it can be celebrated. So it's Advent Sunday. What does the word Advent mean? Well, it, it literally means coming or arrival, which is why we remember the coming of Christ. But, you know, historically, Christians didn't just use Advent as a time for remembering and looking back to Christ's first coming. It was also about looking forward with expectation to Christ's second coming, that time, that glorious day in the future when Jesus will return, will establish forever his kingdom, will make all things new and will judge the living and the dead. And so, although this time of Advent is all about us preparing and anticipating Christmas Day and remembering the baby born in the manger, Advent is also about us preparing and anticipating the second coming of our Saviour, not as a baby, but as a reigning king. So who is Advent for? Well, some of you will have heard of a guy called Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Dietrich Bonhoeffer was a, uh, he was a, a pastor, uh, a theologian, born in Germany uh, during World War II, and he lived during World War II, and he took a stand against the Nazis. As a result, he was persecuted for it, and eventually he was executed for his stand. But he once said this about Advent. He said, the celebration of Advent is possible only to those who are troubled in soul, who know themselves to be poor and imperfect, and who look forward to something greater to come. In other words, Advent is for those of us who know they need rescuing. Those of us who know that they haven't got it all together, who feel broken and recognise ultimately that their sin has separated them from their creator, from God. And to such people, the celebration of Advent, looking at both the first coming and the second comings of Christ, is an occasion that, amongst other things, gives birth to joy, peace, hope and love. And over these next four Sundays leading up to Christmas Day, we're going to be looking at joy and peace and hope and the love that Christ promises for all of us who are troubled in soul, who know themselves to be poor and imperfect, and who are looking forward to something greater to come. And today, as we've already seen from the way that the candle was lit so wonderfully this morning, we're focusing on joy, the joy that Jesus brings. And boy, do some of us need a, a good dose of joy, especially with the kind of year that we've all had. You know, so, for so many of us, this pandemic, pandemic has literally sucked the joy out of so many things that we took for granted. Going for a coffee, sitting in a restaurant, hugging relatives, going to church. So I wonder as we start this morning, what are your joy levels at this morning? How much joy have you got in your heart? I've always loved this story and I know I've told it before, but I, I think it wonderfully expresses the way joy can be seen sometimes. 
a church conference was called in America. It was for the Presbyterian Church. And at this conference, people, as they entered into one of the meetings, they were all given a helium filled balloon and they were all told to release their balloon at some point during the service when they they just felt like they wanted to express the joy that was in their hearts. A sort of tangible way of saying, yes, I'm rejoicing. And the service started and all the way through the service, every now and again, you'd see the balloons go up as people express their joy. But did you know this? When it was all over, there was still a third of people who had not released their balloons, a third of them. Now, if we were to do the same thing this morning, I gave you a balloon, would you be letting your balloons go whilst I'm speaking to you now? Well, I hope that by the time we finish this morning and sharing together, that we will all, in a sense, be able to let our balloons go as we're reminded of the joy that Jesus Christ brings. And by the way, when I talk about joy this morning, I don't just mean that deep joy that so many Christians love to talk about. You know, that joy is so deep that we never see it. Reminds me of my pastor friend who often says to his congregation, some of you need to tell your faces that your hearts are full of joy. Yes, the joy that Christ brings is deep. It is right down there and it's not a joy that is dependent upon outward circumstances or whether we're having a good day or a bad day. But this joy is to be expressed at times. It is meant to kind of erupt out of us and give us actual feelings of happiness and actual rejoicing. After all, the word joy itself that is used in the Bible means joy, rejoicing, happiness, gladness. And one commentator I read described joy as that inward feeling of happiness and contentment that bursts forth in rejoicing and praise. So as we think about joy, let's go to the right at the beginning of the, the, the early life of Jesus, to the night that he was born, a night that was like all, all other nights, very ordinary, except for a group of shepherds who were looking after their sheep. So let's go to Luke's Gospel, Luke chapter 2, starting at verse 8. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven the shepherds said to one another let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told to them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Now, what an incredible experience it must have been for these shepherds. These shepherds who in, in that culture were, were, were pretty much on the fringes, despised by many, looking after smelly sheep. But boy, do they get a glimpse of glory and a glimpse of heaven. But it's one that begins with fear. They're absolutely terrified. Who wouldn't be? 
but it ends with joy and with them praising God. And if you're beginning this this morning, if you're with me this morning and you have fears of any kind, be like Mary, ponder these truths in your heart and may your experience be as the shepherd's is. May it end in joy. And it's all because Jesus, the Messiah, the rescuer has come. And of course, the news of his, of his birth was announced with those wonderful words. The angel said, I bring you good news of great joy for all the people. Notice that it's not bad news. It's not boring news. It's not the kind of news that we think, oh, let's turn the TV over. The kind of news that makes us want to not listen to it because it's so awful. This is good news of great joy. Now, of course, the birth of most babies is a cause of great joy and indeed great relief, especially for the mum when they finally pop out. But the birth of this baby of Jesus ignites in us a great joy for a number of specific reasons. For a start, the birth of Jesus, I think, causes us joy because it begins to answer some of the big questions in life. You know, the sort of questions like, are we really alone in the universe? Is there even a God? And if there is a God, what is he, she, it actually like? I think the coming of Jesus begins to answer those questions. We're not alone in the universe. There is a God and he's no distant and detached deity either. But in the person of his own son, Jesus Christ, God has entered in to the mess of this world, a mess that we created, by the way. And he's begun to sort it out. And what kind of God is, is he? Well, we look at Jesus. We look at Jesus and we see a God who knows how to balance truth with grace. A God who came to serve the least and the lost. A God who in the person of Christ gave up everything. Dying on a cross, rising again from the dead so that sinners like us could be reconciled to God. That should spark some joy. We're not alone. There is a God. Of course, that leads to the second great reason of that the coming of Jesus gives us joy is because he did come to end our sin problem. Ever since the Garden of Eden, mankind has rebelled against their God. We have all of us gone our own way. We have all turned our backs on God and the one who created us. You know that's true by just trying to see, do I, do I fulfill the, the core of all the commandments of God? Do I love God with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind and strength? Well, no, we don't. I don't. Do I love my neighbour as myself? Well, no, I don't. That shows us that we, we can't do what God wants. We've turned our back on his ways. We've essentially, actually, we've kicked God off the throne of our lives. We put ourselves on the throne. We now worship the idol of me, myself and I. And as a result, sin has separated us from God. It's like a great big wall between us and our creator. And we are slaves actually to our sin. We often talk about people being free and free will. Well, do you know what? We're slaves to sin without God. We're not free at all. And also we're prisoners to the power of Satan and we are destined, according to the Bible, to an eternal hell. But folks, God sent Jesus, Jesus to be our saviour. Yes, Jesus was a great teacher, a healer. He was wonderful in so many ways, but the core of his ministry, his very name itself tells us that God sent us a saviour. Some of you will remember the story of Joseph. We could call him Jesus' stepdad, if you like. Joseph finds out that Mary, his bride-to-be, is pregnant. He's thinking, what the heck is going on here? Do I divorce or what is happening? He has a dream, and in that dream, an angel says to Joseph, Joseph, Mary will bear a son, and you, Joseph, you should call his name Jesus. Why? For he will save his people from their sins. That's why he came, to save us from our sins. The very name Jesus literally means the Lord saves. And when we place our trust in him, 
when we believe in his life and his death and his resurrection, we become united to Christ, which results in us being saved. Not only from the power of sin, but from the penalty of sin. We're no longer under God's condemnation and we're free also from the power of Satan. And that is for all who repent and turn to Jesus. If all that doesn't fill you with joy, I don't know what, what will. It's reason enough to be joyful that Jesus has dealt with the sin problem. Indeed, Jesus himself said this, didn't he? He said, I tell you, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents. I love that picture of, of heaven throwing a party. I've been to some great parties in my time, but none compares to that, does it? Every time someone repents and comes to Christ, heaven rejoices. Just think, if you've done that, if you've turned to Jesus and have trusted in him, heaven threw a party for you. And if you haven't done it yet, turn to him today, confess your sin, receive the forgiveness for sins. And experience a joy that flows out of heaven and into your heart. So the coming of Jesus brings us great joy because we know we're not alone. We know that there is a God and we know that our sins can be forgiven and we can be reconciled to our Saviour. And then finally, folks, we can experience joy today because we have a glorious future. Because a day is coming when good will triumph at last and evil will be destroyed forever. As I said at the start, Advent isn't just about looking back, but it's also about looking forward with anticipation to, the, to Christ's second coming. A day when he will finally reign and all will be made right. Think of it, folks. A time is coming when all the pain will end. Disease will cease. There'll be no more grieving over loved ones that we've lost. No more battling disappointments or depression. Folks, the day is coming. And along with all of creation, we are groaning inwardly and longing for that day. And I've often thought to myself, and I'm sure C.S. Lewis himself used to talk about this idea that if you're the sort of person that often thinks, I don't belong here, that sense of belonging, is it's, there's, a, there's a gap in me that longs for something else. That is a longing for that day when Christ will come. You weren't born for this world. You were born for the world to come. And when that day arrives, all the brokenness and the pain and the horrors that so many of us are enduring now will seem like nothing compared to the joy of being in God's perfect presence forever and ever. For those of you who are watching this right now and you're struggling with various things, let me encourage you to fix your minds, fix your eyes on the joy that is before you. Look ahead with eyes of faith to that glorious day and let some of that future joy reach back and fill you with joy today. That's what Jesus did after all, wasn't it? We're told, aren't we, by the writer of Hebrews that for the joy set before him, Jesus endured the cross. Jesus went to the cross and bore all of the horrors of it, being fueled by the joy that was ahead of him. So he ran his race, anticipating the joy to come. Folks, let us do the same. Let that, the, the joy of that, that future day ignite hope in you today. As we come to the end, I... I read recently about a letter that was found that had been written by um, a third century man. He was approaching death and he penned what became his last words to a friend. And in the letter, this is what he wrote. He said, it's a bad world, an incredibly bad world. But I have discovered in the midst of it a quiet and holy people who have learned a great secret. 
they have found a joy which is a thousand times better than any pleasure of our sinful life. They are despised and persecuted, but they care not. They are masters of their souls. They have overcome the world. These people are the Christians and I am one of them. Folks, are you one of them? Are you a Christian, a follower of Jesus? Have you repented and turned to Christ? And do you know the joy that comes from being united with him? A joy that, yes, it is deep and untouchable by outward circumstances, but bubbles up occasionally and puts a smile on our face. At the start of this Advent season, let us all turn afresh to Jesus. Let us embrace the baby in the manger who became the man on the cross, who became the man that walked out of the tomb alive and is now seated at the right hand of the Father. And let us, like millions around the world, know the reality of these words from the Apostle Peter, who writing to Christians who, who hadn't actually met the risen Jesus but believed in him, he said this. Though you have not seen Jesus, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and you are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. Oh, I hope that is your experience today. At the end of the day, our joy springs from Jesus Christ himself. And because nothing and no one can destroy Jesus, our joy is guaranteed to survive whatever this life throws at us and will find its fulfillment in eternity with Jesus forever. May the joy of the Lord be your strength today. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Advent time, for this season of anticipation, of looking back and also looking forward. We thank you that you did send Christ as our saviour, that he did come, he was born. And we thank you for that deep, lasting joy that comes from being united with Jesus. Oh, and I pray, Lord, that you would cause that joy to well up in all our hearts this morning, that inexpressible joy that somehow becomes expressible, that you would allow it to burst out. And, and the fears that we may have, the sorrows that we may have this very day will be eclipsed by your joy. And I pray for anybody that has not yet turned to you that this very day, as they're listening to this, that they will have their hearts warmed by your love and your conviction that they will turn to Jesus and find forgiveness of sins. Lord God, may this Advent season, even during these crazy times, be one of joy for all all of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.